Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, it is part two of watching the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. This video took me a long time to make, so please consider dropping a like on this video, subscribing to the channel, and comment down below what your favorite Marvel property is. In this video, I'm watch Daredevil season one all the way through Doctor Strange. So yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Daredevil, and I've never seen the show, like, not even once. I've, I've never seen any of the Netflix shows. I've heard Daredevil is the best, Jessica Jones is also pretty good, and then, like, Iron Fist uh, and Luke Cage aren't as good. Defenders is decent, and I heard Punisher was also good, but I've never seen any of them. But I heard Daredevil is the best, but I'm about to start with season one all the way through. Let's do this. Okay, I just finished Daredevil season one, and it was really good. There were some points where it was uh, kind of boring, but otherwise it was amazing, and the season finale cannot be topped. That was amazing. Out of the three shows we've uh, watched so far, Agent Carter, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and this, like, they're all really good. But next up is Jessica Jones season one. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Jessica Jones, and honestly, I've never seen this before, but I've heard it's pretty good. It's, like, not as good as Daredevil, but I've heard it's really good. Still, it has three seasons like Daredevil, so it must be good, and some shows have a lot of seasons. It's still not good, but yeah, let's go watch it. Okay, guys, I just finished Jessica Jones season one, and honestly, it wasn't as good as Daredevil season one. Uh, the beginning, like, first three episodes were pretty slow, but then it picked up and it got really good. The villain is really good. I, th I say Kingpin and then, uh, Kilgrave are both around the same equalness. Maybe Kingpin a little higher of, like, how evil they are. Or not how evil, I mean, who's the better villain? But, uh, it was really good. The finale was amazing. Like, finale of Daredevil and than Jessica Jones, they were amazing. But now, it's time for Daredevil Season 2. Whoa. Okay guys, I'm about to watch Daredevil Season 2, and I'm really excited for this. I don't know what happens in it, but I'm really excited since Daredevil Season 1 was amazing. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay guys, so I just finished Daredevil Season 2, and honestly, I actually like this uh, season a lot. It was not as good as Daredevil uh, Season 1, but it's still really good. I really love the Punisher as a character. And then uh, Electra was in it. She was pretty good. She wasn't the best character. I thought she was a little bland, but I really loved Punisher. This season was actually really good. So far, Daredevil has been, I'm going to say, it, my favorite TV show out of the Marvel ones, including the ABC ones and, like, Everything we've watched so far. But next up is Luke Cage season one. Okay guys, so I'm about to watch Luke Cage season one and I have not heard uh if it's good or bad. I heard it's like sort of decent. But let's hope it's pretty good because Luke Cage was introduced in Jessica Jones season one. But this seems like it'll be an interesting show. I don't think it's gonna be close to Jessica Jones or Daredevil, but I hope it's better than what other people have said it is. Yeah, let's watch it. Okay guys, I just finished Luke Cage season one. Honestly, this is the worst show by far. It started off super slow. Some of the episodes were way longer than like the other shows. Like one of them was like an hour and five minutes. And that was crazy. It wasn't even like good. The episode was super boring. The only good episode I would actually say was good was episode 11 and maybe episode 13. But yeah, next up we have Iron Fist, which I heard is way worse. Okay guys, I'm about to watch Iron Fist season 1 and I heard this show is horrible. I heard season 2 is way worse. But this like out of the Netflix shows I heard this one is the worst. So I'm not very excited to watch it. But... Uh, yeah, let's watch it and see what it's all about. 
Okay guys, I just finished Iron Fist Season 1, and honestly, it was decent. I, w I wouldn't say it was bad. Like, it was way better than, like, Loot Cage. Except for Loot Cage Episode 11. Yeah, Episode 11. That was really good. But this was decent. Like, it was more entertaining in general. The finale, all these finales of all the shows have been good so far, even Luke Cage. But, like, this show was, like, more entertaining. And I really liked it. But next up is Defenders, which I'm really excited for because I've heard a lot of good things about it. But I've also heard some bad things. So, I'm excited to know for myself. Okay, guys. I'm about to watch Defenders, and I'm actually really excited for this, because so far, I don't think any of them have met, which I really want to see, because all the shows are very different. Like, Daredevil is, like, really dark, has a few jokes in there. Luke Cage was also pretty dark. And then you had Jessica Jones, which was super funny. I really love that show. And then you had Iron Fist, which was also pretty funny, but also pretty serious sort of like somewhere in the middle and they did not seem like they would go together well but i've heard good things about this so i'm really looking forward to it let's watch it okay guys i just finished defenders and honestly this show is amazing the first episode was really weird because like none of them interacted second one was a little better third one uh with that like scene uh at that building Whew, that was amazing i really love that the villains are fine, I don't really like to watch, uh, as I said, it, as I watched Daredevil season 2, but, yeah, the ending, oh, that finale, when they're all down there fighting, it's amazing, and then I really thought Daredevil was dead, like, I knew he had a third season, so I knew he was gonna be brought back somehow, but, ah, uh, yeah, he was brought back, but that really, like, I was like, I felt it, even though I know he was still alive but yeah i'm very excited but next up we have ant-man just one of my favorite underrated mcu movies okay guys i'm about to watch ant-man and i really love this movie i feel it's very underrated because people think uh you, you can skip that one it's not really that important but i really love it it's very funny i think it's better than the sequel but the sequel's still really good uh but this movie is really good uh, the Ant-Man movies don't make as much money, so I'm really scared that they might not make a third one. Because I liked both the first and second one. But, yeah, I'm really excited for this movie. I really love it. Okay, so I just finished Ant-Man, and it was way better than I remembered. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in a while, but I really enjoyed it, the whole heist thing. And, and the ending was really good with him in a yellow jacket. It's honestly... You know, uh, an amazing movie and very underrated, uh, but I really love it. But next up is Angels of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episodes 1 through 19. It's going to take a while, but I'll do it. Okay, I'm about to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episodes 1 through 19, and again, I don't know what happens, but this is where, for me, it started getting a little boring, a little, like, didn't feel like a Marvel show. It was really weird. But hopefully the second time around it gets better and then I made it through more of the show. But yeah, I'm gonna watch it. Okay guys, so I just finished Angels of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episodes 1-19. through 19. And as I said, this is where it sort of fell for me the first time I watched it. But it was better than I remembered. I still don't like the whole hive idea. I really wish they didn't turn uh, Daisy as a... Uh, into the hive. I wish they did some other like side character. She's like our main character. We don't like her turning evil, but like it just feels so off putting. I don't really like that. But next up is Ant Man post credit scene two. Let's watch it. Okay, I'm about to watch the second post credit scene of Ant Man. Super short, but out of all the post credit scenes, I've heard this one's really good. I don't remember what it is, but I've heard it's good. Okay, so I just watched the second post credit scene of Ant-Man, and I forgot how big this was with, like, they have uh, Captain America, Bucky, and Falcon, like, all in this small-time movie, like, as a post credit scene. Gave a lot about, like, Civil War with the Accords, and you gotta remember, this was the end of Phase 2. Like, they didn't even start at Phase 3, so, like, usually when it's the end of a phase, 
don't really give any hints in the post credit scene to the next phase at all. Or, yeah, they don't really do that. But this one gave a lot of hints and it was really cool. Uh, but next up is Captain America Civil War, which I'm so excited for. Okay, guys, Civil War. This is in my top three MCU movies. I love this movie. I'm so hyped for it. Like, I've already seen it, like, a bunch of times, but I love this movie so much. I'm Team Iron Man, of course, but I also love, like, Cap. And out of, like, all the trilogies, besides Avengers, but that's not really a trilogy, it's just four movies. Uh, Captain America, all three movies, have been amazing. Like, it's so spectacular. But the Iron Man ones, like... The first one's amazing, but then the other ones are eh. And the same with, like, Thor, the first one, and the oh, like, just Ragnarok's really good. But Captain America has always been so good, even though I love Iron Man more as a character. I love this movie. Okay, guys, we just finished Civil War, and I really love this movie. Uh, it was amazing. Better than the last time I saw it. I forgot some bits. It was really good, but... Oh, that airport scene is one of my favorites. I really love uh, Ant-Man in it, or Giant-Man, Ant-Man. Uh, I really like he, how he was introduced to all the other Avengers. And then Spider-Man, that's amazing. And then Black Panther, we did a little glimpse of. Oh, I really love this movie so much. I didn't watch any of the post credit scenes, because I'm not supposed to watch those yet. But next up is Into S.H.I.E.L.D., Season 3, episodes 20 through 22. So, let's go watch that. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, episodes 20 through 22. So, I'm pretty excited for it, because it has been better than the first time I ever watched it. So, I'm pretty excited for the, it. But after this is uh, Captain America Civil War post credit scene 1, then Black Panther. But let's watch this on this. Aim to Shield. Let's watch it. Whoa. Okay, guys, so I just finished Aim to Shield Season 3, Episodes 20 through 22. And I actually like these uh, better than, like, uh, 1 through 19. Like, the finale of Aim to Shield has been really good for all of them. Season 2 was fine. Uh, and then that little scene at the end with Ada. Or whatever. Pronounce it. Season 4. Pretty good. But next up is Captain America Civil War post credit scene one, and then Black Panther. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch uh, Captain America Civil War post credit scene one. I don't remember what this one is, but let's go watch it. It's for short, let's watch it. Okay, guys, I just uh, finished the Captain America Civil War first post credit scene, and. I don't remember this post credit scene at all, like Bucky going under the ice. I don't remember any of that, but it sets up Black Panther pretty well. But the area like that they're in, in Wakanda, seems like nothing we ever see in Black Panther, which I know was made two years later, but still. Uh, but that post credit scene, I don't think I've ever seen before. Like, I have, because I've seen all the movies in post credit scenes. I don't remember that one, but I really love that post credit scene. But next up, as I said, it's Black Panther. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Black Panther. This movie, for me, I really loved when I saw it in the theaters. I saw it for my birthday. It was right around the same time. But this movie, I really liked the first time watching it. But I've seen it a couple times. Each time, it sort of gets a little worse and a little worse. But I still really love it. The end fight isn't the best. I really love Killmonger as a villain. Uh, same with Ulysses Claw as back in Age of Ultron. But yeah, let's watch this movie. Okay, guys. So I just finished Black Panther. And the movie was pretty good. It's not my favorite. Like, there's a lot more that are way better than this movie. It's a little boring at times. post credit scenes both are really good. And then I love the characters, the chemistry between them. But the plot of it isn't really the best. Killmonger is one of my favorite villains. I really love that. I'm really excited for Black Panther 2. Uh, and then I watched the post credit scenes 2 and then 1. Because that's the order it goes in. 
Uh, but next up is Captain America Civil War post credit scene 2 and Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay guys, I'm about to watch Captain America Civil War post credit scene 2, the one with Spider-Man. And then after that, watch Spider-Man Homecoming. Okay guys, I just watched the Captain America Civil War post credit scene 2, one with Spider-Man. It was pretty good. I don't remember this one that much, but uh, it was pretty uh, good one, the whole... <laughs> I really love the joke of this friend was huge and Steve from Brooklyn. It's really funny. Uh, and I really like it. It really sets up Homecoming well. Uh, but I'm about to watch Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm really excited for that. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Spider-Man Homecoming. I really love this movie. It's really good. Uh, I really wish it was on Disney Plus with the whole Sony thing. Same with, like, if Incredible Hulk and, uh, and then, like, all the one-shots and then both Spider-Man movies on uh, Disney Plus be amazing. Because Infinity War and uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp are coming later, but they're already on Netflix. But if you have a VPN, it doesn't really matter. But I'm really excited because I really love this movie. Uh, and it's really great. I love Tom Holland Spider-Man, the best out of all of them. Let's go watch it. Okay, guys. So I just finished Spider-Man Homecoming. And honestly, this film is really good than the last time I watched watched it, which I really love this movie. It's really good. As I said before, I really love how, uh, I really love Tom Holland's Spider-Man way better than Tobey Maguire's also really good. Andrew Garfield's fine. Uh, he's not bad, but this movie is amazing. Both those credit scenes are amazing. I watch both of those. And yeah, honestly, this is a really, like, when I saw this, I was very, and it, I was very surprised on how good it was. Like, it seems like such a small stale movie, but it's still really good. But next up, we have Inhumans. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Inhumans, and whew, it's Inhumans. I've heard this is horrible, because they were going to make an Inhumans movie for Phase 3, but that was pushed by, oh, I can't think of his name. There's this one dude who was in charge of, like, some of the Marvel movies and stuff, and he was really pushing it with Kevin Feige, and then Kevin Feige didn't really like the idea of it. But then they, like, kicked him off of the movies and moved him to the TV stuff, and uh, then he was like, I'll just use Inhumans and Angel of S.H.I.E.L.D. and introduce it there, and then make a whole show. And the show was such on a cheap budget. It's horrible. They didn't want to do CGI for Medusa's hair. So I'm like, I think the first or second episode, they cut it off. <laughs> so I haven't even seen it. I've heard this is horrible. It is shorter than some of the other shows, and it's only one season. I think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but I don't know what the show is going to be. I'm very scared for this show. But I'm gonna watch it. <sighs> Might flip out if it's horrible at the end. Oh god. I am not ready for this show. <laughs> okay guys, so I just finished Inhumans. Honestly, out of the MCU, I'd say nothing is really bad. There's like some stuff that's like, uh, that they could have improved that. This is the only thing I'd call bad so far. Like, this show was, ah, uh, it was really boring. There's barely any action sequences. And then when there were, they were like all weird. I could, you could like tell when watching that it was on a tight budget because they just didn't even try. And then the intro, I liked how it was short because I hate long intros. But the intro was just, is horrible. Like, some of the Netflix ones are, like, super long, so I skip them. But, like, at least they're, like, sort of good quality. This one, the intro sounds, I don't know why I'm talking about the intro so much. I'm so glad it's only eight episodes and there's only one season. Because this show was horrible. Oh, my gosh. I don't get why the show is so horrible. But it just is. But I'm about to watch Cloaking Dieter season 1 and 2. So let's get into it. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch uh, Marvel's Cloaking Dagger season 1 and then after that season 2. Uh, I haven't seen the show before. I've heard it's decent, 
so I'm not, I don't know what to expect from it, but, because I've never seen it before, I've never heard what the plot is, I don't even know what the characters are, cloak and dagger, I don't even know, but I'm about to watch the show, and hopefully it's good, I'm gonna watch season one, then season two, and after that we got Runaways, uh, season one, two, and three. We're about to watch Cloak and Dagger. Okay guys, I just watched Cloak and Dagger season one, and honestly, it was a weird show for me. So I really liked the whole uh, origin story of them. I treat like it, some people don't, but I liked it a lot. But then that was like the only good thing about the first episode. Then the episode's really weird. Episode six was eh. And episode 7 was oh, it was crazy it was honestly so amazing and I really love that episode and episode 8 was also amazing and 9 and 10 all 4 of those episodes were amazing and I really loved watching it because it was really good so now I'm really excited for season 2 I really hope it's as good as season 1 and then after that we got Runaway season 1, 2, and 3 we're about to watch season 2 Okay guys, next up is Cloak and Dagger Season 2, about to watch that, but as I said about Season 1, the beginning of it was pretty weak, pretty boring, but then it really picked up once Episode 7 rolled around, and I really hope it keeps that same energy from the later half of the season, and for the second season, because then I might really like it, but after this, it's Runaways Season 1, 2, and 3. Let's go watch season two of Cloak and Dagger. Okay guys, so I just finished Cloak and Dagger season two. And honestly, I, I would say overall it was better than season one. But Dineen, again, was really slow, like season one. Like, it didn't start off like how the end of season one was. It was like, season two started off like how season one started off. And it was really weird. And then a lot of stuff just got like complicated at times like way over complicated there's a lot of like going into people's minds and it just got really confusing at points like it was really hard to follow some of the time but then the finale like the last i would say two episodes were amazing the like last four episodes in total were yeah good but like i don't know it just got really complicated at times it did not make make it any sense sometimes but next up is runaway season one two and three let's start with season one okay guys next up is runaways season one two and three starting with season one and runaways i watched season one and season two and when season three came out i watched like i think a few episodes of it but then i sort of lost me a little bit got lesser less entertaining uh but uh, Runaway Season 1 is my favorite out of the seasons. I really love it. And I'm watching it on Disney Plus because I have Hulu with ads and I'd rather watch it without ads. So Disney Plus is the way to go. But yeah, we're about to watch Runaways. I feel the show is very underrated. And apparently in Season 3, there's a crossover with Cloak and Dagger. And I never made it to that part. So let's go watch season one and season two then season three but i could be wrong with that crossover thing i don't know okay guys so i just finished run away season one and i love this show as i said before this is honestly the marvel shows so far i've liked a lot of them i've liked agent carter i've liked agents of shield i've liked daredevil i've liked jester jones I liked Iron Fist, I liked Defenders, I didn't really like Luke Cage, didn't like Inhumans, uh, Cloak and Dagger was fine, but Runaways, I love it so much, and honestly this show is really good, I love season 1, season 2, but as I said before, I've seen it before, and season 3 is sort of where it lost me, but I really hope uh, it doesn't uh, lose me again, because I really want to see what happens, same with the crossover all that stuff, but we just finished season one. Ah, oh, this whole season is great, and again, Marvel with the finales. They have really good finales, and it's really amazing, and I really love all their finales, even like some of the bad shows have really good finales. But we're about to watch 
season two of Runaways. Okay, Runaways season two. As I said before, I love Runaways, but Runaways season two. I think I liked season one and season two. I liked the whole house and mansion. I love that place, and I also love season one. Honestly, these two seasons are really good. They're, like, very equivalent for me. So, yeah, we're about to watch it. Okay, guys, so I just finished Runaway Season 2, and this season is longer than the other ones. Season 1 and Season 3 are uh, only 10 episodes, but this one's 13. And the first seven episodes are amazing, with seven being epic mid-season finale. I honestly think the mid-season finale is way better than the actual finale. And then the second half is where it sort of lost me, as I said, because it's... It, I don't really like the plot line of the host being the parents and then, like, the whole alien family. I hate Zavin as a character. Oh, one of the most annoying characters. But we're about to watch season three, and hopefully it gets better since I didn't get through the whole thing. I'm really excited for that cloak and dagger uh, crossover. Okay, guys, I'm about to watch Runaways Season 3. As I said before, the season sort of lost me, like, around the midpoint. So, I really want to see what happens in it and see that crossover of cloak and dagger. But we're about to watch it. I'm pretty excited because I love Runaways as a show. Season 1. It's amazing, and the first half of season two is, oh my gosh, way better. But we're about to watch season three, so hopefully it goes pretty well. And then after this, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Slingshot web series, and then we have Doctor Strange. Okay, I just finished Runaway season three, and I'm just going to get out of the way first. Episode 10 is definitely not canon. Like, first off, it takes place in 2022, which means it's in between the five years of the snap, and yet there still seems to be a bunch of people. And then they invented time travel before the Avengers, like a year before that. And then, and then their time travel rules are like other movies where it's like don't interact with your past self and stuff like that. Versus Endgame has like totally different rules. So, and this was released after Endgame, so I'm very confused why that happened. I'm just gonna say episode 10, not canon, my belief. But otherwise, it was fine. Uh, I would say season two focused on a lot of uh, Carolina's powers, but this one definitely uh, did more of the magic with Nico's powers. It was still a pretty good season. Really, I really, really, really loved the episode uh, with Cloak and Dagger. That's a really good one. And then there is another episode, I can't think what it was. I had a reminder to myself to say it was really good, but I think it was episode five or four. One of those two was really good and I really loved it. But otherwise, as I said before, it lost me the first time I ever watched it, but I actually liked it. It's pretty good. But next up, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Slingshot. Okay guys, I'm about to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Slingshot web series. And by the look of it, like, the episodes seem very short. There's only six episodes, and the longest one's six minutes. So this is going to be real quick, real, real quick. And I have it up here on YouTube from the official ABC uh, YouTube channel. All six episodes on the playlist. I'm about to watch it. It's going to be pretty quick. But after this is Doctor Strange. But let's watch this. I'm pretty excited, because I don't really know what it's about, and I've never seen it before. Okay, guys, so I just finished Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Slingshot. It was actually pretty good. It was, as I said, it was very short and went by fast. I have the playlist on here. I just pressed play also, like, auto went to each one. And it was pretty good. The plot with, uh, the whole, uh, what's her name? I know her nickname is Yo-Yo, but, like, I don't know her actual name. Yelena. I think that's it. But... She was, like, the main character in this, and it's very interesting, and it sets up, uh, season four really well, uh, which is gonna be a little bit later, but next up, we have Doctor Strange, so let's go watch it. Okay, guys, yeah, so I'm about to watch Doctor Strange, and I think this movie is very underrated. I really love Doctor Strange as a character. Uh, my two favorite characters in the MCU are Iron Man and Doctor Strange, and in my opinion, 
the most powerful Avenger isn't Hulk, it isn't Thor, it's not Captain Marvel, it's not Scarlet Witch, it's none of those. It's Doctor Frickin' Strange. He is the strongest Avenger, or most powerful. But this movie, as I said, is very underrated. I love him in Infinity War, and then later in Endgame. Ah, oh, I love his character so much. Uh, but this uh, movie takes place a little after it was actually released. It's sort of like flip-flopped with uh, Black Panther, sort of. But we're about to watch it, and I'm super excited. So let's do that. Okay, guys, so I just finished Doctor Strange. I forgot how much I love this movie. It's so good. I love Doctor Strange as a character. His, like, character arc, like, just in this one movie is so amazing. Then grows over time in Infinity War and Endgame. And I'm really excited for Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. That's my, f that's, like, what I'm most excited for out of Phase 4. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. Uh, but, yeah, I just finished it. We're gonna watch the next thing. I don't know what it is. I didn't ha have it planned before. So, whatever it is, we're about to watch it.